a giant Dutchman's pipe. Um, look at the inside. Look at the uh, look at the pattern. A giant piece of meat. It's nice. gorgeous. Um, amazing pattern and it has a unique smell. In fact, I'll pass it around. If you kind of squeeze the bulb on the back and just give it a sniff. Um, I'll pass this one around too. You guys can smell. There's yeah, it's very musky. Um, are you guys familiar with true bugs, mm -hmm. like stink bugs? You know the ones that have kind of the triangular back? Looks yeah, like a yeah. shield. Sorry. Mm -hmm. A lot of times those bugs will secrete this um, sap. And certain types of flies will eat the sap off them. That's their nutrients. So here's a great evolu evolutionary mind blower. That smell you're smelling on the inside of that flower, that's the smell of a specific type of uh, stink bug. That flower has learned to mimic the smell of the stink bug so that when the fly comes inside the flower looking for its meal, when it gets in there, there's nothing in there, but it bounces around inside that little bulb, gets covered in pollen. And if you look inside the little hole, see how there's little hairs inside there? Mm -hmm. Those hairs keep the flies from flying out. When that thing, this is a great sentence, feels that it's been pollinated, those hairs relax, the fly comes out, fly is the next one pollinates it. So not only can that plant feel wow. that it's been pollinated, it somehow learned to mimic the smell of a bug over the years to trick the pollinator into coming in it. That's a crazy thought. Um, it, it's an amazing thing. Really? Um, plants are awesome. And plus the texture on that and the color. It's just great. Um, oh, it's, it's amazing. My favorite thing, I want you guys to think back to like the 1980s. You guys, can you guys remember back then? Mm -hmm. Remember the, the 1980s high-waisted bikinis? <laughs> I'm pretty sure this was the uh, original one because um, that, 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 even the pattern looks like Victoria's <laughs> Secret 1994. Um, but yeah, really cool, really cool plants um, grow really well all throughout like California stuff. If you ever guys want want something kind of unique, um, the the organism something we call an epiphyte. You guys familiar with that term? Yes. Yeah. So if I said uh, symbiotic relationship, what would you think? Positive or negative? Positive. 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 Mutually beneficial. Yes. In a parasitic relationship. Only one benefits. Yeah, only one benefits. Parasite usually kind of sucks something out of them. In an epiphytic relationship, it's very neutral. This vine is not hurting these monkey pod trees whatsoever. Um, it's just using them to get up for a little more sunlight and to get up off the ground and have to compete with so much um, other plants and animals and things. And look up in the canopy, there's those flowers are everywhere right now up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, only 30 years old that vine too. Mm -hmm. over that whole thing. Actually, another really common epiphyte. Look at those three palm trees as we walk by. You see that vine going up the middle palm tree? Mm -hmm. That's a really common epiphyte that probably every single one of us has eaten before. Huh? Especially if you like sweets. The vanilla? Yeah, that's a yeah, vanilla orchid. Um, yeah, that okay. big vine going up that tree. You guys ever seen uh, vanilla orchids before? Yeah. Uh, anybody here not know vanilla comes from an orchid? Um, yeah. Produces this big yellow flower. Now we're talking about pollination and you know things knowing how to manipulate their pollinators. One species of bee pollinates vanilla orchids. Now imagine all the pollen is on my fingertips, okay? All the pollen's on my fingertips, so this plant goes whoop, hidden. Nothing can get to it. It's sealed up in there. The female part of the flower grows around it like that. There's nothing in there that can move it. Um, there's a specific type of bee that has a little proboscis or tongue. And as it crawls up inside the flower, its tongue pushes this open. And the female part wraps around and connects. If you don't have that bee, you can't produce vanilla beans. Huh. So if you guys ever wondered why vanilla is so expensive, that bee only exists in a couple places in the world. If you don't have that bee, you have to pay people to go out and hand pollinate those orchid flowers. And an orchid flower blooms about eight o'clock in the morning and it falls off by noon. Um, it doesn't last very long. You know what the, anyone know what the tool of choice is for hand pollinating vanilla orchids? A stick. What's that? A paintbrush. So paintbrushes are very commonly used to um, pollinate um, a lot of flowers. Interestingly enough, the, you know what it is? You, you had a hand I was originally told stick. Yeah, a stick or a toothpick. What you do is you have to actually take the flower and rip it off. And what you're left with is just the reproductive part. You take the toothpick, stick it in there, pull it open, and then push the female part down. If you guys ever wondered why vanilla beans are like 15 bucks a piece at Safeway, 
is because you got to pay people to go out there and hand pollinate them. Um, that's a lot of labor. It's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, for you, uh, Mrs. Mosquitoes love you. You know only female mosquitoes bite humans, right? Yep. They need our blood to make their babies complete the reproductive cycle. Does anybody know what male mosquitoes uh, eat for their dinner? Female mosquitoes. Female mosquitoes, yeah. Um, believe it or not, this is like uh, a butterfly, a bee, and a hummingbird, they drink plant nectar. Um, there's actually several species of orchids that are pollinated purely by mosquitoes. So they are beneficial. Darn. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, yeah. I still could have done. I mean, can you imagine what life would have been like here in Hawaii with no mosquitoes? I mean, yeah, we have nothing, no predators out here. Nothing's going to hurt you. We're the opposite of Australia. In Australia, everything's cute and fuzzy and everything will murder you. Here in Hawaii, things look crazy. You guys seen some of our spiders? Oh, yeah. oh man, some of our spiders look gnarly. They're totally harmless. They're not going to hurt you at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we were kind of docile out here. Um, I, I could have gone without the mosquitoes. You guys know what the number one, you're going to love this. The number one killer in the state of Hawaii. Four. Who knows? Diabetes. Diabetes. It's probably up there. Um, Surfing. How many of you are afraid of sharks? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, they're not even they're not even like the top hundred. Everyone's afraid of sharks. Don't be. The odds of getting bit by a shark are super low. In fact, you're ten times more likely to get hit in the head by a coconut than you are to get bit by a shark. Coconut. That's how safe Hawaii is that you're most likely to die from a coconut. Um, and that's actually why all the hotels trim them now. People go, we've wanted to see a coconut on a tree and we haven't seen one yet. And I'd be like, yeah, because those are little clusters of lawsuits just waiting to happen. <laughs> so we trim them now to make sure. Uh, there's an area here in the garden we don't trim them. They're little kind of sick to look like out in nature. So the trick is, the tree trimming companies, we go out and we trim them. You pay us to take your coconuts. And then we sell them back to you guys for eight bucks a piece at the farmer's market. <laughs> It's such a sham, you guys. Don't pay that much for a coconut. You'll find some on the side of the road for like two bucks. <laughs> uh, right here, guys, if you're interested in really unique things, this is what we call a Suriname cherry. Um, this, the darker, darker red it is, the sweeter it'll be. It's going to taste like a very tart pie cherry mixed with like a green bell pepper. It's one of the strangest flavors. It's segmented. Try it. It is segmented. Yeah, there's only one seed in the okay. middle. Okay. Um, if you were to pop this open, it usually only produces one. Sometimes you'll have a second. Yeah, just one, one individual seed in the middle. Uh, but if you guys want to try something really unique flavored, it's quite nice. A uh, little tart. Oh my gosh. Um, some of them like them. Some of us don't like them. And that's just how humans taste. What I think is good, someone might think is terrible. There is um, green pepper in yeah, it doesn't it taste like bell yeah. pepper? It's the weirdest sensation. If it wasn't for the green pepper, it would just be generic tart cherry, but because of the yeah. green pepper, it makes you go, well, we should green pepper, it, it, green So here's pepper. the thing is, imagine now making those into a jam. Mm, okay. Like, you make a nice sweet jam, or better yet, if you made, so if you, you could make a savory jam, put it on like a pork chop or something. Actually, most people would make a, make a jam out of that. Here's the other one. It is. Now, imagine making a juice of that. And then mixing it up into a real good margarita. Yeah. yeah. That would be pretty good. Um, I wouldn't just surround eat those all the time, but if you mix it up into a drink, I can see that. Um, we're used to make jams and jellies. The leaf of it is a natural fly repellent. Where these grow, you'll take the leaves and you'll strip them off the trees, throw them on the floor of your little hut, and then as you walk over them, as you squish them, um, the smell that comes off of them smells great, by the way, when you crush them up. Um, you know, smell a wonderful scent to it. Um, that smell repels flies. Um, all this stuff up here, built uh, or planted here because it's really high in antioxidants and high in vitamin C. Um, Are they easy to propagate? Uh, oh yeah, okay. we don't we don't have to touch these. They okay. they do their own thing. We gotta. Oh, yeah.
Well, you won't be getting bit by mosquitoes on the inside, right? But uh, most of the stuff in this garden was planted as kind of an afterthought. When these guys bought this place, they had a grand plan for what they wanted to do with it. And they would come out here every winter, um, just the winter months. It was a winter getaway. Uh, and so, you know, the winter just goes to show how native plants are better at keeping the soil um, in place. Uh, yeah. Native plants are good. Look at those guys down there. Wow. That was yeah. us yesterday. You guys um, came out to this bay too? Or? Yeah. Yeah, do yeah, a little south shore. Too high yeah. Off the tallies, yeah. yeah. They do to the southern route, which is beautiful. Yeah. And then they parked us there and we had to out right in the middle of the bay. It was lovely. Yeah, John Wayne fans? A little bit. Anyone remember the John Wayne Lee Marvin movie, Donovan's Reef? Yeah. So that house down there, that was Cesar Romero's house in the movie Donovan's Reef. The majority of that movie was actually filmed right on that beach down there. And John Wayne was famous on Kauai for starting some of the worst bar fights people had ever seen. Um, I don't know if you, any of y'all remember that old movie from the 60s, but uh, boy, uh, there's some great fight scenes between John Wayne and Lee Marvin. It's because apparently they didn't like each other in real life, so that wasn't really acting. Uh, apparently they used to go do that at the bars all the time. People would line up out front and look through the windows and they'd watch them pick fights with each other. One of the cool things with our garden, I didn't really mention it all, but about 200 movies filmed down there. We don't charge Hollywood to film. We just ask that they make a donation, which usually means they'll make a donation that's way more than what we would charge, and it's a tax deduction for them, and it's great for us. So we get a lot of people. Um, so if you guys ever come back and somebody tells you the garden is closed for renovations, no, we're not. We're filming a movie. We just can't tell you. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of cool when you meet, you meet a lot of wealthy people here in Hawaii. And here you got the Allertons. Left their fortune behind, donated it to universities, built this place, and now here we are, working with botanists all throughout the tropics to save plants. Kind of a special thing. Um, I know it sounds corny, because every single time you go on a tour, your tour guides and your crew members and everything, they go, yeah, you know, you guys were the best group I've had all week. Um, and I'm pretty sure they say that to every single <laughs> group. Um, I love what I do here. Um, so thank you guys for coming out and being a part of it. Whether you meant to support an organization like this or not, you did. So well done, you guys. Thank you. Um, we very much appreciate it. Well, I hope so. You know, it's, I mean, let's be honest, botanical gardens are a hard one. Um, some days, some places, you go out there, and I mean, it's it's science, man. Like, it's botanical names and everything, and you go, oh my gosh, I just can't comprehend all these things. Um, so it's kind of, you know, trying to kind of create a nice balance, learn a little bit, enjoy a little bit. Because uh, chances are, you guys already forgot half the stuff I said anyway, so <laughs> why overload you all, right? Uh, but yeah, special little spot. I'd implore you all, whatever you can do to make sure that... Uh, the environment is safe from us. Um, do it. Plant something, recycle something, whatever it is. Get out there and be mindful of your surroundings. Oh, also, uh, that farmer's market at that roundabout will be going on uh, until about 6, 6.30 tonight. So you guys got a solid uh, hour and a half to get out there. Check that out if you wanted to. Uh, look for your uh, your fruits and veggies. We're still in avocado season, mango season. Uh, a lot of citrus right now. Uh, and if you guys haven't tried our local apple bananas, uh, oh my gosh, have you guys tried them? Our apple bananas are tangy, they're sweet, they're exponentially better than the bananas you get at the store. Uh, if you guys can find them, check them out. Actually, even our grocery stores have apple bananas. Look for them, they're, uh, they're really tasty. And enjoy your luau tonight. Uh, Hyatt luau is a good one. Drink a Mai Tai in my memory.